Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. My plan today was to come in and do a bucket hat video because I've had a few requests for those, but you're not getting it. Instead, I'm going to show you how to make a small spanner pocket pouch thing. We're going to make this tool roll out of upholstery fabric. And if you're going to use a cotton fabric or something lighter, put some wadding in between. So I'm not using any wadding or stabilizer because it's vanishing fabric and it's sturdy enough. So if you do want to use regular fabric or lightweight fabric, get yourself some stabilizer of the same dimensions that I'm about to tell you. Hang around. Okay, here's what we're going to need. Now I'm going to put eyelets on this pouch. If you don't have eyelets or the grommet machine, just go and make some tabs out of some contrast fabric. Then you can hang the bag with the tabs. So if you have access to eyelets, use half inch or 12 millimeter eyelets. I buy these off Amazon and eBay. There's, you can get them all over the place. I've got two pieces of fabric here for the main body of the bag, 10 inches high by 25 and a half inches across and we need two of those and that is 65 centimeters by 25 centimeters. The other thing we'll need is two pieces of contrast fabric. This will be trimmed down because we'll need to taper it. So we will start off with two pieces of fabric at 25 and a half inches long and six inches high. The other thing we need, if you've got a really nice wide bias binding, you can go ahead and use that. I've got three strips of fabric from the full width of fabric cut at two and a half inches. Now, rather than marking straight onto our fabric, it'll be easier for me to show you how to do this on a template. I've just grabbed some paper and we want that at least as long as your um, pocket fabric is going to be. Starting from the edge of your fabric here, we're going to just mark a line at one inch. Now, a few people have asked me why I use inches rather than centimetres. Inches are actually a lot easier for me to see on the ruler, but I will provide the inches and centimetres on this template. We're going to start with a one inch edge. From that one inch, we're going to draw another one inch line. Now, on your ruler, if you've got one of these, you've got your one, two, three and so on inches. This line here is a one inch line. I'm placing that over the top of the line I've already drawn. And that will just mimic the line that I've got. So one inch to there, and this is my first pocket. So it's number one. The next one will also be one inch. So we're going to have a couple of small spanners in the first few slots. So that's one inch as well. And the next one will be one inch again. Then we're going to increase the size and we're going to make this one and a quarter inch. So I've got the one inch and a quarter and I'm going to line up the one and a quarter inch line on the previous line that I've just drawn. And we've got one and a quarter inches there, whereas these are all one inch. We'll do another one at one and a quarter inches. So the spanner sizes will be increasing. Then we'll do a one and a half inch gap. So I've got a one and a half inch line over the top of the previous line I've drawn. And then we want another one at one and a half inches. Then we're going to do a one and three quarter inch line. So you can see we're just increasing the size in small increments. And then we want two lots of two inches. Once we've done two lots of two inches, we want a two and a quarter. And we'll do another one. And then we want a big one for our larger spanner. The last one is two and a half inches. So we've got our sizes increasing in small increments. Now this first one here is just the edge of the, uh, the bag that'll be stitched down. When we've finished all of the sections, we're just going to do a one inch line at the end and we can cut that off. Okay, I've gone and marked in all the measurements in inches and centimetres so that you can see that easily. So we've got four lots of one inch, two lots of one and a quarter, two lots of one and a half, there's a one and three quarter, two lots of two, 
two lots of two and a quarter inch, a two and a half inch, and then we end with a one inch. And the centimetre conversions are underneath there. So you just might want to pause your video so that you can catch up with that. Okay, all of the markings have been transferred to my main piece of fabric. And just a tip, don't use a pen. I've gone and used the pen there and put the incorrect marking there, but look, it's, it's fine. I'll, I don't think anybody will notice this. Transfer your markings to your piece of fabric and we can go and now assemble the whole piece. What we need to do now is taper this piece of fabric. So we've got the smaller spanners at this end where the one inch increments are and then the larger spanners up at this end. So we want to have a higher point on this end here and a lower point here. Go back to your template and we need to mark a diagonal so that we can taper the size of the spanners that we're putting in here. We're going to take a mark at three inches. So I'm just going to mark three inches from the top here, which will be the fabric. And then at the end here, we're going to make this four and a half inches. So we've got three inches on the narrow end of the spanners, four and a half inches at the other end. Take your ruler and just join those, that, those two marks. So that's how our template is going to look and this is how our, our main body is going to look as well. Let's put that to the fabric. So at the one inch increments, we're coming up three inches. At the end on your final one inch, we're going to come up four and a half inches. We'll just cut this off at the end. So if you join your two fabric pieces together now, just pin it together and line it up and we'll cut this all in one go. Okay, we've joined our fabric and we're going to just trim this section off. So this is ready for us to put the binding on the side edges. When joining your fabric pieces, what we want to do, we can join them just together like this, but you'll end up having a lot of bulk in one section when you fold over the layers. If you join the fabric this way, we're going to have right sides together. So if this was printed, the printed side would be facing up. And if this were printed, the printed side would be facing down. Take your two pieces of fabric, line them up on the edge there. And I've drawn a diagonal line from the corner of the top piece of fabric to where the corner is on the bottom piece of fabric. So we're going to have a diagonal line all the way across and what you'll do here is take it to the machine and you'll actually stitch directly over this drawn line. And I'll show you how that looks when we're finished. Now, if you're confident at doing these binding strips, a really quick way of attaching these on the diagonal is to actually overlap the edge of your fabric. And what happens there is that you've got a point You've got your right angle there and you start sewing at this point here and the overlap on this side, you can see the right angle just there as well. So what you can do is stitch straight from that corner down to that corner without having to draw any lines. When you um, do stitch this, don't watch your needle going up and down, watch where you're actually going. So if you start sewing here, look at the end point and you'll actually be able to follow a nice straight line without watching your needle. If you watch your needle, you'll go a little bit wonky. So it's just a little tip to sew straight. Watch where you're actually going, not what you're doing. When you've done this, we can trim the edges off, press the seams open, and you can see you've got a diagonal line going across here. On the other side, you've got the seam distributed over two and a half inches. What happens there is that you'll fold your fabric in half and you can see that the thickness, the bulk of the fabric has actually been distributed across that two and a half inches rather than just straight down the straight line. We'll be folding this in half 
and then we'll end up folding it in half again later and that but the bulk of that seam is distributed over that whole area there instead of just in the straight line here's the other one that we did with the drawn line just trim that off and again press your seam open we'll take this to the iron fold it in half and just have a nice crease down the center with our lines facing up we're going to take our two and a half inch strip and we've got the raw edges facing up we're going to clip that in place all the way along when you get to the end we can just trim that off now we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch all the way down along the raw edge here once you've stitched that down we've still got our raw edges here and we've got our two layers take this the folded edge here and just press that away from the body of the uh, pocket section once you've done that we can take this and fold it so we take the fabric and we fold that over to the other side and it's actually going to be a fair bit wider on the back than it is on the front fold the folded edge over and you'll be covering the black line of stitching there once you've clipped this down make sure that you've got uh, your main bag color um, bobbin in the bottom of your machine and we're going to stitch really close to the edge on the black side of this binding here and on the other side you'll actually have your cream colored thread and there we go that's nicely bound on the top and we can go and apply this now to our background fabric and then we can start stitching the channels take one piece of your main fabric the other one we'll leave for later on place your pocket section over the top and we'll line this up right along the bottom edge clip it in place lining it up evenly along the bottom and on the sides once that's aligned we can take this back to the machine and then we'll stitch all of these channels down now we want to make sure we back stitch at the beginning and the end and we'll do that for all of these channels now because I've actually gone and used a blue pen to mark this I'm actually going to do a matching black thread in the channels just to make it a little bit of a feature to hide all my sins now when I create channels like this I actually like to start from the center and work my way out that way if there's any puckers as I'm going I can actually spread them out toward the outside rather than having them all come along one side and the fabric being grossly distorted so start from a center line and just quilt all the way out to the other sides once you've done that go on to the next one and smooth it out as you go along Now you can see along the bottom of the fabric here it's actually starting to shift up instead of across so I thought it would stretch out um, what I'm going to do now for the rest of this is actually stitch just along the bottom edge won't be seen when we put the binding on but I'm going to stitch all the way across the bottom edge just to keep that secure so that it doesn't actually sneak up so in hindsight we would go and stitch all the way down before we do the channels okay that's finished all the channels are done we're now ready to put the backing on and then bind it I'm really happy with the contrasting colors here not so much the stitching line but the black against the red and the cream I think that looks really nice now if you wanted to you don't have to go and put binding around this at all you can actually simply take this piece of fabric lay it right sides together leave an opening here pin it all around and stitch the whole thing all the way around clip your corners and then turn it through and top stitch it the black actually looks really really nice I like the contrast fabric of the binding so I'm actually going to take that little bit of extra trouble take the main fabric face it down and place this one over the top line all that up 
and then I'm going to clip it together and then I'm going to attach this binding strip all the way around the bag. So if you want to finish this here and just bag it out by laying the other piece of fabric over the top and stitching around, you can do that. This is now ready for me to put my outer binding on. Take your binding and we're going to leave about six inches unstitched. On this particular one, I don't want to start stitching from the top. I want to stitch from the underneath. And the reason for that, when I bring my binding over, I'm going to have a thicker edge here, but it means that I can actually top stitch in the one colour all the way around and I don't have to change my threads on the cream and the red. So I'm going to put my binding on the wrong side. So we're going to leave about a six inch tail and we're going to start about halfway down the long edge. And we're going to stitch this down until we get to within a quarter of an inch of the corner. So leave this tail, start sewing here, back stitch, and continue until you get to within a quarter of an inch of the corner. Then what happens, you'll stop sewing here, you'll fl flip the corner over so that the point matches up with the point on the corner of the fabric then you'll flip it over again and then you can start stitching all the way down. I'll show you when we get to the machine. Now so that you can see what I'm actually doing here, I'm going to stitch over this in a cream coloured thread. So I've got about a six inch tail here, opened out there, that's your raw edges along here, the fold edge is here and we're going to start stitching here. So I'm going to do a back stitch at this point here and stitch all the way to the corner so I've stitched along here come to about a quarter of an inch before the end flip my fabric over so that you've got a nice diagonal fold that comes up to the corner of the fabric take your binding piece and flip it forward again and line the raw edge up with the straight edge of your fabric and this fold will be lined up with the raw edge of the fabric on the other side so if I just hold that in place there you'll have a little ear just there so all it is is flip the fabric down have the diagonal to the point, flip the fabric back again, line it up and continue sewing. So you'll have the same seam allowance all the way. So where you've flipped it and folded, you start sewing here and you continue all the way. Excuse the double stitching, I accidentally did too small a seam allowance. So you'll see that the fabric will open out and there's a little pocket there and when you turn it through it'll be really nice. Come to the other end and we'll do exactly the same thing. So we're going to flip and fold. When it's lined up you can take it back to the machine and start stitching again. When you get to about six inches from the edge, you've done all four corners and you get to a back to about six inches from where you started, we're going to back stitch at the end. With your remaining tails, butt the fabric together. So I finished, I've started stitching here. I'm going to meet about halfway, bring the fabric along the edge of your mat, fold it over and just pin that in place and do the same with the other side, fold it over until it meets the other one. So I've got the two folded pieces of fabric or binding strips just meeting there. From this fold, we want to measure one and one eighth of an inch or 2.8 centimeters. So from that fold, we mark one and one eighth of an inch 
and do the same for the other side and we can cut that off. Now we need to join this piece of fabric. Open out your binding on both sides and with the right sides facing put them together. Now here you've just got to manipulate your fabric so that you can close up this little area. So we've got right sides we're going to face them together and the long edge of the binding will go on the short edge of the other end of the binding and the short edge of this one will run along the long edge of the other end of the binding. It can be a little bit fiddly so if you want to leave more than six inches open you can do that. It'll just make it easier for you to work in this area. Black's probably not a very good colour to give as an example but what we're going to do is stitch from the corner fabric at this end to the corner fabric at this end. And it's exactly the same technique that we've used when we actually put our binding strips together in the first place. So just, just stitch from here on the diagonal down to the other corner. So there's our final binding strip joined together on the diagonal or on the bias and all we have to do now is trim this off. Before you do that just take it and open it out and just test it to make sure that this is going to sit nice and flat along here. Now I have actually had to go and re-stitch this because I've discovered that I didn't go from the corner to the other corner. It's really important to make sure you go from one corner to the opposite corner so that you can actually when you open this out and just test it it'll actually line up. We can trim off the triangle so lay it all nice and flat and what we can do here is finish stitching from here and join up with that and then our binding is completely closed. Now what we need to do is turn the binding the other way around. So just press that out and then we'll come around and we'll turn everything around the right way. Now you can see here, I hope you can see here, there's a diagonal seam along here which comes down that side. This is where the bulk of the seam has been distributed. It's come from the corner down here and then comes back down along here. So you've got two and a half inches of a seam the, where the bulk has been distributed all the way across that area. Had it just been the straight seam across here, you'd have a seam along he, around here and you'd be throwing, sewing through about a dozen layers of fabric. It just helps it to sit flatter. Having said that, there's nothing wrong with just joining your fabric strips straight. You can do that at the beginning and the end and with all of your joints. Turn your wrap the right way around and just flip the corners over. Now we don't want to trim our corners because we want to have nice sharp corners here. And we're going to stitch our binding down all the way. And it really doesn't matter where you start. So let's just start on this side here, flip over the folded edge, clip it in place and we're going to stitch this all the way down. When you get to the edge, bring the next fold over and just pin or clip it in place so that it's nice and secure. And what you'll do is you're going to go and stitch all the way down on the edge of this black fabric here, come to where the diagonal meets and keep on stitching all the way around until you've secured the binding for the whole mat. And make sure you put a matching bobbin thread in the bottom. If you're going to put eyelets in or grommets, decide whereabouts in the corner you want to put them. So I'm one and a half inches from the edge and we'll do the same for the other side. Got one eyelet there, the other one there, hopefully that's centered. I'm going to just quickly go and put a hole in the fabric here and then I'll use my grommet machine to put the eyelets on. 
The last thing we want to have is some hook and loop tape or Velcro. So we want a five inch strip of each side and then I'm using strapping on my bag. Now my strapping is 30 inches long or about 76 centimeters long and you can use, if you don't want to use strapping or if you don't have access to strapping, cut a four inch wide piece of fabric, fold it in half until the raw edges meet and then fold it in half again, stitch it down both long edges to make yourself a similar strap. If you're using the strapping, you just want to seal the edges. So I'll just run a match along that just to melt the edges so that they don't fray. And if you're using fabric, then just fold the raw edges up on the end. Take your strapping and place your the rough side of your hook and loop tape over the top. Just place it down there and we'll stitch it down. So we've got our hook and loop tape, the rough side on the top here. Turn your strapping over until the hook and loop tape, the rough side, is facing down. And then measure 10 inches from the edge in, which will be there. So we've got 10 inches from the edge to here, and this is where we're going to place the soft side of our hook and loop tape. So you want to make sure they're on the wrong side of each other. We've got the rough side here that's face down and faced up is the hook and loop tape and that is 10 inches or 25 centimeters from the outside edge. Secure that down. We'll put this on the back of our tool roll now. Attach the end of your tape to the end of your tool roll and we're just going to attach that all the way down so that you've got the soft side of the loop tape on the top here and the rough side is underneath. So go and stitch that down both long edges and down on the side edges as well until that's all secure. You can't see the stitching on the other side because I'm hoping that you've matched your thread. Once you've done that you can put all of your tools inside, roll it up and close the loop over the top. And then we have a finished tool bag. We've got a couple of extra little tunnels on the outside edges. So I've just whacked a pencil in there, a ruler, pen, and we've got the graduating sizes for the different size spanners. All you need to do here is just roll it up and tuck it away in the car. There you go, that's your finished product, a spanner roll for the car or your shed, wherever you like. It's got a couple of eyelets on the end there, so if you've got it hanging up in a shed, you can do that quite easily. It doesn't just have to be for spanners. If you're a makeup artist, you can use these, this for makeup brushes. Uh, I you can use it for all sorts of things. You can make a mini version of this for knitting needles, anything you like. This will also make a great Father's Day gift as well. I have actually had people ask me to make something for boys and for men. There's, it's really difficult to try and think of a project that we can make for the guys and, and make it cheap enough so that we can sell it at our markets as well. Because a lot of people don't want to spend 50, 60, 70 dollars at a market for a handmade tool bag um, so this one this is a really good project for the boys out there uh, for the people that have sheds in the blokes room now I'm saying boys and blokes it's really not just for them us girls can have these tool belts and tool bags as well when I was raising my kids I actually used to give myself a Father's Day present every single year because I felt like I was a good dad as well as a good mum so it's not just for the guys it's for everybody a really handy tool roll up I'm not actually sure if I'm going to sew this to sell. Over the past couple of years I've actually made a few different types and I thought they'd be a really good seller but I don't know. Um, this is probably one of the better ones that I have done. Let me know what you think. Do you think this is something that I should have in the shop to sell? If so, what price would you put on it?
because I don't know. So I've just taken this in next door to show Chris and see what he thought about it. And he liked it, but then he usually does like most things that I make. But there was a strange man in the backyard with him. So I've asked him for his honest opinion. And he was actually surprised that I made it because he, he doesn't know that I sew. So he was very surprised that I had actually made this. And he's given this a thumbs up. He really liked the fact that it was made out of fabric and not plastic. He said a lot of the time um, people will go and buy these tool bags and you roll them up three or four times and the plastic cracks and splits. So he actually loved that uh, it's made out of fabric and he loved the style of the bag. Also suggested that we could do it a double row so that we could have metric spanners as well as imperial spanners. But that's a project for another day. The one thing he did love was the eyelets. He said a lot of times when you have these bags, the guys will roll up their tool belt, take it out of the car, have it like this, they'll unroll it and everything will fall out. But he said that having the eyelets at the top is a good indicator for which is up and which is down. So I thought that, that was a really good piece of information to have. There you go, it's been given the thumbs up. I asked him what he'd pay for it and he said 30. So 30 is actually the figure that I had in my head that is based purely on my time. So it's not on the fabric because I haven't paid for this fabric. It was something that I got, I got nearly five tonne of fabric about three or four years ago. So I've still got lots of this left. So it's really just my time that a person will be paying for. So I'm going to make a few of these bags and see how they go. So I hope you like this video. Uh, let me know what you think. What will you use it for? Do you like the colours together? Catch you next time.